Thank you. Good morning and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living here in beautiful San Clemente. We're so glad you're here with us. It's so nice to see real people <laughs> as opposed to video people, although we are still welcoming our video people out there. So glad everybody's with us this morning. Please stand and sing along with the fabulous Wooldridge duo up here on a Ricky Byers Beckwith tune called I'm Choosing Heaven. <laughs> Today, I'm choosing heaven today. I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing, I'm choosing heaven today. Choose joy. I'm choosing joy today. I'm choosing joy today. I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing, I'm choosing joy today. Choose love. I'm choosing love today. I'm choosing love today. I am walking the road of heaven right now. Singing, I'm choosing love today. Choose beauty. I'm choosing beauty today. I'm choosing beauty today. I am walking the road of heaven right now. Singing, I'm choosing beauty today. Choose peace. I'm choosing peace today. I'm choosing peace today. I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing, I'm choosing peace today. Back to heaven. I'm choosing heaven today. Yes, I'm choosing heaven today. I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing, I'm choosing heaven today. I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing, I'm choosing heaven today. I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing, I'm choosing heaven today. Thank you. Heaven right here on earth. Right? That's what we believe. We make our own heaven. We make our own hell. So it's heaven today. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, beautiful center. And welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Capistrano Valley. We're so delighted that you're here this morning. And we are a non-denominational, trans-denominational center, which simply means that you are welcome. Everyone is welcome here. Whoever you are, whatever path you're on, Whatever faith you are, you are welcome here. You know, um, so welcome home. Welcome home. And you out there in cyberspace, you've been home for 16 months. <laughs> it's time to come home. We want to see your face. We want to love on you. So please, come on back to the center. We are fully open. The uh, children's uh, youth rooms open, everyone's here, and we would love to see you. And we would love to see you. So, <laughs> yes. So we're going to start this morning like we always do, with the flames of faith. We perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths, all sentient beings come from the one great universal presence, which we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and the practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, 
honoring the Four Noble Truths and the Path of Compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ Consciousness as the Path of Love. We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the Path of Compliance with the Will of God as the Highest Calling. And we light the candle for the Universalistic Religion of Baha'i, honoring the Path of Unity and the Path of Peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as our practitioner Hans Smith lights that last candle, let it represent the path that brought you here today. Please join me in an affirmative prayer. We go within so we'll never be without. We go within knowing that there's only one truth. This truth is that there's only one life, one spirit, one joy, one love. And this one is the first cause to all of our creation. It is the yin and the yang, timeless, spaceless. It is the essence of who we are. I know that all the qualities of God are revealed through each one of us and through all of God's creation. We are the individualized expression of love revealed here on this planet. We are the light. We are the joy. We are the peace and the compassion. And so I know that I affirm and I decree that all is well and that each and every one of us are here on purpose. And that purpose to be here at this time, in this decade, on this moment, is to be the expression of love, to be the expression of compassion. That is why we're here. We are here alive, awake, and aware of our responsibility as spiritual beings. So I know that this service is in divine right order, and that it is re at everything that happens today reveals the beauty of God. I know that Reverend Arped's talk is inspiring and uplifting. I know that we connect with the beautiful music this morning and with each other in fellowship. Oh, for this I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful and my heart is full of thanksgiving for our time together, for this teaching, and for this knowing. So as my words are placed into divine mind, they've already been created we know that this is the truth. And so I anchor this prayer in love. I anchor it in confidence. I anchor it in joy. And please say with me, and so it is. Okay, and today's affirmation is together. I commit to the highest vision of my life. Let's do it again. I commit to the highest vision for my life. And so it is. And now our declaration of principles. I believe in God, the one creative intelligence, operating through the universe and operating throughout my entire being, now and always. I believe this perfect spirit operates upon a law of mind and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfect creative intelligence can be used by me and by every other person to produce health, abundance, and love in mind, body, and total life experience. 
I use it now, and I rejoice in it, and so it is. And now I'd like to welcome Donna Miller to the platform. Please welcome. I'm giving you a little history on Donna. <laughs> She's a dear friend of mine from many moons ago. We did musical theater together. And, you know, just that's the, one of the wonderful things about Facebook is that all of a sudden you can find someone that you haven't connected with in so long. And so we connected during pandemic. And I said, do you ever sing at places? And she goes, yeah, she was 26 years at, 27 years at the Unity Church. Yeah, Unity, Unity Burbank Center for Spiritual Awareness. So she knows what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> she's a composer, songwriter, singer, performer, does everything. She's written for Disney and Sesame Street. And anyway, I'm just so delighted to have her come all the way from LA to be with <laughs> us this morning. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> Did You're you my first audience. <laughs> So this song was written by a friend of mine. Her name is Eleni Kalakos. And Eleni is very tall, like Diane. <laughs> and she wrote this song um, when she learned of something called the tall poppy syndrome, about not reaching your highest level of beingness because you think it's going to make somebody else feel bad. In a field of poppies, orange as a flame, lived a baby poppy, petal was her name. From the moment she was born, she reached toward the sky, deep inside a little voice dared her to aim high it said be the tallest poppy be all that you are be the tallest poppy dare to touch the stars stand up proud and stretch your wings and set yourself apart the tallest poppy with the tallest heart. Rules and regulations in the poppy land made it clear to pedal growing tall past your neighbor was the final word pedal just ignored it cause inside she heard be the tallest poppy be all that you are be the tallest poppy Dare to touch the stars Stand up proud and stretch your wings And set yourself apart Be the tallest poppy With the tallest heart And the wind it tried to blow her down and the rain to knock her flat and the bugs they bit and tortured her the poppies turned their backs the petal kept on growing past the limit sign shot up like an could be heard a hundred baby puppies reaching up to her singing 
Be the tallest poppy Be all that you are Be the tallest poppy Dare to touch the stars Stand up proud and stretch your wings And set yourself apart Be the tallest poppy With the tall Donna Miller. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I love that song, Being a Short Person. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Gives me a new, new vision, a new vision. Okay, so our yearly theme is Timeless Wisdom, Evolutionary Vision. And July's theme is Pulled by, by vision. Something happened today that has made history from a person that was pulled by a vision. He wanted to be the first man civilian in space. And uh, Richard Branson made it today. He took, they took off, they connected with the, the one connected with the other, he went up, 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 spun around in space for a while, came back down and uh, everything was safe. He hugged his wife, his kids, his grandkids. History was made today because he was, yes, because he was pulled by a vision. We all need to know that, that we, there is something within each and every one of us that is pulled. So um, today, so it's pulled by a vision and today's theme is free your mind and the rest will follow and our absolutely fantastic Reverend Arpad, or one of our wonderful staff ministers and a great photographer, will be <laughs> speaking to us today. Please welcome Reverend Arpad. Wow, well, thank you, Reverend Judy. <clears throat> Pulled by a vision. I love this topic today, I really do, because um, we get to move. Huh. We get to move from the talking intellectual part of our faith to the believing and the trusting and the experiencing part of the faith, our faith. And, you know, sometimes religion is, is an intellectual experience. We love to talk about God. But I've always said for years, you need proof. Why in the world would you trust and believe in a God unless you had proof? Who would do such a stupid thing? You know, we, had, we have an atheist, and a former atheist in the crowd. But something happened in her that changed her thinking. Something moved in her. So uh, this is about as biblical as I'm going to get. Seek ye, uh, let me know if you heard this before. Seek ye the kingdom of God, and everything shall be given unto you, right? Yes. What do you think that means? How about if I were to change? How about if I were to change that to mean it's getting worse? Dun, 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 dun. Let's try this way. Huh? Okay. <laughs> There's no 
nothing like screwing up the beginning. You know, your whole momentum just goes to the pot in the handbag. So if I were to change the words, seek ye the kingdom of spirit. Kingdom. K I N D O M. Not the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. So it's about kinship. So what is kinship? Kinship is about family. Kinship is connecting with like-minded people in love. Not anger, not hate, not bias, but like-minded people in love. People that you resonate with because you experience love. Now, I'm going to read something to you that maybe I could illustrate this. This is the global vision for Center for Spiritual Living. It says, we see a world in which each and every person lives in an alignment with his or her highest spiritual principle, emphasizing unity with God and connection with each other. A world in which individually and collectively we are called to a higher state of consciousness and action. Those are beautiful, flowery words. But they have no meaning unless you give it meaning. Everything in this world happens, and it's up to us to decide how we will react or how will we interpret or how will we see that experience. So freeing up our minds, when we begin to free up our minds, stuff happens, stuff follows. When we free up our minds, we start on this journey, this process, of revealing our biases in our thinking. Think about it. The bias that everyone has in their thinking. Why do you think Ernest Holmes wrote The Science of Mind? He wrote it because he wanted to prove that the Bible was true. The science of mind has to do with the intellectual part of you that needs proof and verification and demonstration that is repeatable and verifiable over and over and over again. But that's not enough because you have to go inside. You have to do something with this proof. You have to make it your own. You have to, dare I say, trust God. Yeah, we gotta trust the man, the woman, the person, the thing, the it. Ooh, it. I don't think I could say that. I would like to say higher power, higher consciousness, because God to me is so, so much more. See, when we hear something like that quote that I gave, we, we know that there's some kind of truth in it. We know that there's some kind of truth in it, but it's an intellectual truth. It's intellectual truth. But something inside of us starts to vibrate a little bit. So we know there's truth in there, but what do we do with that next? How does this crazy world work? How, what did Ernest say? The thoughts have power. Thoughts are things. Thoughts are magnificent. Thoughts let you have some control in your world. Thoughts have bias. Thoughts have bias. And by eliminating the bias and controlling the bias, we become aware. And when we become aware, woo, when you become aware, that's when S-H-I-T happens in your life, right? Because you can't hide anymore from your life. You can't hide from what's happening to you. You, as a teaching, we as a group, have to own up to our life. Whoa! It's a lot of responsibility, I think. I know it is for me. Because if I'm not getting what I want, something's not right. I'm out of alignment. So how does this work? I mean, some of you have already heard this. It's very simple. You have a thought. If every thought in the universe were ever manifested, we'd be in a sad place, don't you think? If every thought ever manifested, but that's not what happens. Because thoughts have to have 
energy. And energy comes from within. So you have a thought, and you really want it, and you really desire it, and you really believe it. Not just saying it. It is believing what you bring about, you believe about. What you believe manifests and becomes true. So you have this thought. You're giving it a little bit of energy. It's starting to vibrate. All of a sudden, it's vibrating at a higher level. It's like a transmitter. You know, there's a big transmitter in space. And this thought has gone up to the transmitter. And all of a sudden, it hits the transmitter. And boom, it goes right about the universe. The universe says, whoa, there's something to this. They want this. This must be real. I think I will now pay attention to you. I heard you. I didn't hear you. As soon as the universe hears that you, you're serious, <laughs> serious, then things start to happen, and your life begins to change. I want to read you, what was this, what was this other thing I wanted to read? Ernest said, your soul belongs to the universe. Your mind is an outlet through which creative intelligence of the universe seeks fulfillment. Seeks fulfillment is giving life meaning. So how do we verify God? Any ideas? I have one. It's called prayer. Prayer is the guaranteed way to prove that there is an existence of a higher power and a higher consciousness. Now, we have practitioners in the center, and practitioners are powerful people. They are really powerful people because they don't do anything. You're the one doing the work when you're praying, not them. You're the one doing the work. But what a practitioner can do is they can see the best in you. They can see where your bias is. They suck at seeing their own biases. That's why they have to go to another practitioner who can see it for them because we are trained to see the perfection of you, the ultimate possible the tallest dog, you. We can see that because there's no skin in the game for us. We know what you're capable of. We know your power. We know your grace. You, we know what you can do. But you can't because of your bias. Your bias is saying, ah, not today. Uh, I'd like it. I'd like to win the lottery. Sure, I'd be nice. Who, everyone else is saying that, right? So, what does prayer do? First of all, prayer calms down your mind. Okay? It creates a space for you to see your bias, to see your faults, to see your thinking that needs adjustment. Is that a better way of saying it? When I was a young practitioner, um, I got to share this story. It always makes me laugh. I, I got to share it over and over again. My wife and I are both recovered Catholics, ex-Catholics. And when I was taking practitioner school, um, she, my wife says to me, "So let me let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. If we were still Catholic, it would take." Two miracles to be called a saint, right? Oh, yeah. She goes, well, and this organization wants you to demonstrate three miracles? And I said, yeah. And I believed it. And I trusted in it. I trusted in the process. And you know what? 
to this day, I am still a practitioner. I just, unfortunately, or fortunately, I became a minister as well, you know? I, I remember sitting on the table at the old center and, and people would, um, you know, the little tables we had outside, and they would come and they would tell their story and everybody loves to tell their stories. Oh my God, they love to tell their stories. Blah, 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 blah. And then this happened and they came in from the north and, and these marching ants came in and, the, and they attacked the dog. I would ask them one thing and I, and I tell all young practitioners this. Ask them what do they fear? What do you fear when you're praying? What is your greatest fear? That's what you pray for. That's what you treat for because that cuts it right to the quick. Right to the quick. And then they, then they calm down and they say, I'm afraid of being lonely. I'm afraid of being poor. I'm afraid that no one will take care of me if I'm injured. Those are deep felt feelings that we could work with. Who cares about the ants? Who cares about the, the chickens, you know? It's not important. So, I want to have a conversation about prayer. Because what happens when we have a conversation and we say it out loud, what's going to happen inside? you're going to vibrate a little higher. You're going to resonate a little higher. You're going to find a little more truth, and maybe you'll find a little more trust in this thing we call God or Spirit. So, this is show and tell time. Ready? Tell me a time that you prayed for something that you really wanted, and it came out better than you thought. Who would like... Do we have a mic anywhere? Yeah. Who would like to answer that? That actually prayed for something that they wanted. See, in, a lot of us in religious science have been brought to this teaching because we wanted things. You know, we wanted the car. We wanted the... The, the new job, right? It was very attractive. But what's it really about? It's about what's inside here. So, come on, somebody's got it. Right. Barbara, please. What did you pray for that was better than what you had? God. I prayed uh, when I was in one of the original classes, what, 35 years ago, that we were supposed to treat for um, a certain amount of money because it was a prosperity class. And I really was a little nervous about that. I, everybody was saying, yeah, how about a million? No, I settled for $800. I thought, okay, maybe that'll come. And it had to be from an unknown source. It was just the universe. So long story short, two months later, I got a check in the mail from my parents. And there was a note in there saying, well, your sister needed help, and we thought it was only fair to give you the same amount of money. A check for $800. Wow. Thank you for sharing that, because a good practitioner is, is going to try to not limit you in your thinking. They want, and more. How many practitioners in here will say, and more for the person. Because you may, o you may only have one way of thinking it could come, and that is bias-limited thinking. You know, it reminds me of a funny little story. Uh, this girl was treating for a brand new car. It was a red car. She was a teenager. She wanted a new car, and she prayed on it and prayed on it and prayed on it. And she wakes up one morning, she looks outside her door, and there's a bright red new car in her neighbor's driveway. <laughs> she forgot to put herself in the prayer. 
She forgot to put herself in the experience. Who else? Who else? Come on. Yes. I prayed for a friend and a buddy, and I got a husband that I adored. That's precious. Yeah. Okay, anybody else? I have one. Yes? I, when I bought my house, I was praying for a new house, and I wanted several different things, like a walk-in closet, a bath in the bathtub in the bathroom, uh, a view. Anyway, I prayed for that. And I looked at, for a year, several houses. And then the house next door to my mom and dad came up. And it had everything, plus it was right next to them. It was, and so much more. So much more. Yay. Now, let me ask you, it's not a negative question, but let me ask you a question. How many of you prayed for something and didn't get it? (laughs) What do we think that's about? Anybody want to jump in and, and make a suggestion? It's not making it welcome. It's not making it welcome. What does that mean? Do the next indicated step. Do the next indicated step. So you, maybe you have work to do. Maybe your biased thinking is not clear. Maybe your biased thinking is cluttered. And maybe you're not aware of it. How can you be aware of something I mean, how can you, how do I say this? If you're not aware of something, how do you know what to do? You can't. You can't. You need help. You need, some, you need a practitioner to talk to. You need to get rid of the clutter in your mind. You need to get rid of the stuff. So how, question number three or four or five, how do you get rid of the bias in your thinking through prayer? Meditate. Yes. Anyone else? Release. Uh, Release. What does that mean? Release. Release what? Laundry? Let go. Let go? What are you letting go of? Whatever is in the way. Okay. Do you always know what's in the way? For me, it's getting away from the ego and just listening to the bigger voice. Sorry. So it's... It's not praying from a place of ego, small little guy wanting things. <laughs> small self? I'd say, you guys just shut up now. And <laughs> I want to go to the big source and listen to the clear voice. And sometimes it says, later. Now's not the right time. Yeah, all right. So this person, Diane, is listening to a voice that's talking to her. You have to find a way, everyone has to find a way to allow spirit to talk to you, okay? It could be a feeling, it could be a voice, it could be a word, it could be a vision, it could be a feel, whatever it is, but you have to ask so it is revealed unto you, so because you know what? Spirit's talking to you all the time, every day, 24-7. And you have to pay attention, you have to listen, you have to know when to listen. Because little ego talks more than spirit talks. Little ego has a bigger voice, and is louder, and it's obnoxious, and it tells you all all the things that's wrong with you. It tells you all the things that you can't do, and why you can't have stuff. And you know what, we tend to listen to that little voice, because it's so familiar. Okay, final question, and I will stop and we'll end with a quick meditation. How can you resent, surrender to God to let go of the bias? How do you surrender to God? How do you surrender, surrender, surrender? Yes. Okay, acceptance. Very good. Anyone else? Come on. It's like classroom. Having to know the process. Know the... Release having to know the plan. Okay, so you want a plan in place as you release. Okay, that might work for him. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, I think it's what 
Kathy said about taking the next step, just do the step in front of you without questioning it. Okay. Wow, well, without questioning it, Lee, that's brilliant. <laughs> without questioning it. That's the hardest thing, I think, is just to take that step down there. Okay. So that's all for now. So let's close our eyes. Diane, could you let your beautiful fingers, your energy, your music fill everyone, everyone's soul right now? Oh, just take a deep breath and know that you are loved you are sacred you are holy You are consciousness, effervescent, rising above the fray. You are pure love, pure space. you a little story and just let the words wash over you. This was written by Lynette, an unexpected mystic in 2019. Waiting at a restaurant to pick up my takeout on the heels of finishing a profound book called Tattoos on the Heart. I settled in and picked up my phone to do what wait, waiting people do these days. Suddenly the room hushed and there was a weird change in atmosphere. The clutter of plates, the voice of of those near me, the traffic passing by on Cherry Street, all these sounds became muffled, and there was a feeling of density in the air. At the same time, the sound changed. Everyone around me lost the vividness of their human suits, and I could see with perfect clarity that there is nothing between us or rather, there is something between us and it flows everywhere, within and without. Through all things, even what had appeared sa seconds before to be empty spaces in the room. The human costumes become misty and their brightness is faded. Else some to the fore, a pulsing, a waving kind of energy, an aliveness. It was extraordinary. It also really was hard to describe. I saw it, but beyond that, I intensely felt it. While the people looked like outlines, there was that strange quieting. Everyone was still talking and moving around. I sat in the entryway in the midst of that crowd and everything, all of us there and everything in the place was suddenly connected. Not only connected of one eyes. A fact that still astonishes me. And in seeing it, there came an overwhelming rush of fierce tenderness for everyone there, for all of us, because we are so oblivious to our own extraordinary beauty. Tears were flowing through me. I wasn't crying. It was a no-words experience. I just kept trying to find words for it. 
in that restaurant, I was infused with a powerful sense that the divinity and flowing equally through all of us, equally, all of us. And know with me that we are all one, we are all connected. God flows through each of us. As we give meaning to the world, to our experiences, to our lives, we say, thank you, Spirit. We leave our biases behind. We trust in your wisdom. We trust in your love. And we trust the journey that you are sending us on. And together we say, so it is. And so it is. Namaste. Thank you, Reverend Arpad. Boy, that was a lot of good information, Reverend Arpad. We'll have to go back and listen to that one again. Let's give him another hand. Thank you. It was very dynamic. Thank you. And now once again, Donna Miller. I'm going to brag on her again. <laughs> this song is a is one that I remember you had posted it on Facebook and I saw it or I don't we were sharing yeah, stuff. It was part of it was in a songwriting contest. Ah, okay. So sh share with share with our people. So I was invited to write a song for the Braver Angels um, songwriting contest that they had last year. And I was really glad that I was invited to do that because writing it helped me sort out what I was feeling in 2020. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on that I didn't know how to put words to it, but then songs always help me do that for myself. And, um, we actually won the contest, so that was cool. I've never won anything, so, <laughs> so that was really, really fantastic. And it's the song that brought Diane and I back together. So that's, I love it because of that. It's not black, it's not white. It's not wrong, it's not right. It's not red, it's not blue. It's just me and you. It's not rich, it's not poor. Somewhere in the middle is the open door. If I point a view, don't quite see eye to eye. Well, that's all the more reason why we need a United States of humanity. We need it. We need it. A United States of humanity. The sum of every part. We need a United States of humanity. We need it. We need it. The resolution's in a revolution of the heart. We're living in a great divide. This fear of each other is a suicide. I believe love's gonna keep us alive. But only if we decide we need a United States of humanity. We need it, we need it. A United States of humanity, the sum of every part we need. United States of humanity, we need it, we need it. The resolution's in a revolution of the heart. It's not just the conversation, it's the listening. It takes every voice feeling heard to let freedom ring. We can solve our future, heal our history, sting, step toward our common ground, and spread our we need a United States of humanity. We need it. We need it. A United States of humanity. The sum of every part. We need a United States of humanity. We need it. We need it. The resolution's in a revolution.
definition of the high. Oh, I hold this truth to be self-evident. I have a dream. The United States of humanity. We need it. We need it. We hold this truth to be self-evident. I have a dream. The United States of humanity. We need it. We need it. The United States of humanity. We need it. in a revolution of the resolutions in a revolution of the resolutions in a revolution of the heart Donna Miller and thank what you. a message thank you thank so you. much Absolutely first prize on that one. Oh, United States of Humanity, I love that. Thank you so much, Donna. Beautiful, thank you. Yes, let's give her another hand. I, don't, I can't decide whether it's the song about pedal or, you know, they're so, both so great. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Don't we have the best talent here? I mean, really, we do all of our wonderful in-house and oh, wonderful guests. Thank you so much. Um, so now it's time for our offering. And those of you who are still at home and haven't come home yet, you may send in a check to the uh, center or you can go to our website and there's a way to donate there. But you know, um, when we say our affirmation, I want you to really feel it this morning because We've been saying this affirmation for, boy, as long as I can remember. I started here in 89, so a long time, a long time. And when you really feel the words, it really does something. And we know we give, when we give, we give with love, and that's what makes it expand and grow. So let us take our offering in our hand, and we aren't passing the baskets yet, um, possibly next month, we don't know. Uh, but there is a basket at the back of the room and one right here over here at this door for you to give your gift. So let us say this together. My offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply, and it symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply. Spirit am I Free of all limits Safe and loved and whole Spirit am I Free to forgive This is thankful, are we? And we are so thankful for you, Diane King Van. You are marvelous. We love you so much. And our fabulous band, Ed, Bill, and our guest drummer today, Tony. Thank you so much. Wonderful. 
We have Mary Brogdon in the sound booth and Dave Friedman back there. Also, we have Paul on the camera today. Thank you, Paul. And thank you again, Reverend Arpad, for your wonderful dynamic message. Thank you. And another thank you to Donna. Thank you very much for your beautiful music. Really just so uplifting. What a great day today. We have three practitioners available to you in-house. There's Cheryl Lyman, Patrick Freeman, and, oh, let's see, Hans Smith. No, Hans. Oh, no, Hans. Yes, Hans. Yes, Hans. So we have four, actually, today. Everybody's doing double duty. So uh, if you, it was wonderful the way you um, described the practitioners this morning, Reverend Arpad. So they can see the truth. They can see through the story to your truth. So if you would like to have a short session, uh, you can go to the tables in the back or in the tranquility room. If you'd like to have a longer session with a practitioner, their, their cards are on the wall and you can give them a call and make an appointment. So um, now we have some invitations from Wade and Kimberly. Extinguishing the Flames of Faith, a completion of service. We perform this ceremony to acknowledge that we are all here and not at some other spiritual center. Fundamental to this truth is inviting you to all of the cool things that we do here. We extinguish the candle for the Tao, honoring that no matter what we invite you to, it is all part of the one. We extinguish the candle for the shamanic traditions, inviting you to return next Sunday to hear our favorite shaman and shawwoman, Dave Friedman and who was it? Carla Sharadis, and their topic is commitment and resistance. We extinguish the candle for Hinduism, a polytheistic belief, noting that when we attend conscious connection, we are all God beings joining together, right here with Mary from 12 to 12.30, but not on Zoom. We extinguish the candle for Judaism as we terminate coffee and conversations on Zoom. You can now enjoy some coffee and conversation right here in the sanctuary after the service, and it is kosher. <laughs> we extinguish the candle for Buddhism, honoring the noble truth that our youth program is back. Yay! Invite your kids down to the center for some spiritual growth through our youth program. If you have any questions about it, see the compassionate leaders, Tony Sparks and Becca Phillips. We extinguish the candle for Christianity, honoring that the Christ consciousness is in everyone, no matter what it might say in Leviticus. <laughs> Our LGBTQ group is now meeting in person, so please call Kathy and Tony for more information. We extinguish the candle for Islam, noting that our shifting sands is a meeting of minds that happens on Thursday mornings. We extinguish the candle for the Baha'i, for our unity and peace comes on Fridays in Coming Home, Awakening to Spirit. We extinguish the candle for all forms of new thought, as we explore all these forms in Book Study with Mary on Wednesdays. And if you don't want us to extinguish the candle that represents your light here at the center, remember to vote if you consider yourself to be a member of our community and you haven't already cast your vote for the new senior minister, please do so now. You can easily vote online or with a paper ballot and the deadline is tomorrow, July 12. If you have any questions about the voting process, please contact Pam Rock. Thank you. And now please join us for our closing song. It's right here and right now. Right here, right now, I'm going to make a brand new start. Right here, right now, I'm going to make a change in my heart. Everything I leave, I now receive, and it's gone on to me as I believe. Right here, right now, where I am. Right here, right now, I'm going to make a brand new start. Right here, right now, I'm going to make a change in my heart. Everything I need, I now receive, and it's done unto me as I believe right here, right now, where I am. Right here, right now, I'm going to make 
make a brand new start right here right now i'm gonna make a change in my heart everything i need i now receive and it's done unto me as i believe right here right now where i in the presence of joy and God and everyone here. And so it is. And Woo! So it is. <laughs>